There are about two and a half thousand vehicle fires in Ireland every year. About half of those started deliberately. But if you're in the the bracket of one of the accidental ones, what do you do about a car fire and how do you avoid being in that bracket? Joining me now to discuss it is Connor Faulkner, transport consultant. That's a bigger number than I would have thought. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Now, it's slightly distorted because a lot of them are arson, which is a different category altogether. But if you ask the Dublin Fire Brigade, for example, how routinely they have to sort of go up the mountains and put out a car that's on fire. That's an antisocial behaviour thing. Used to be a lot worse, actually, because we improved the end-of-life vehicle regime so you can now dispose properly of a car. Um, but, I mean, there was a case in years gone by where there was, you know, literally they just decayed on roadsides. There was a concept called company cars where you literally, the nickname was company cars, and they were literally being sold casually um, to youngsters. I mean, somebody would ring the doorbell and say, that old junker there, I'll take it off your hands for 100 quid. And, uh, you know, if it's that or dump it, the person says yes. And that car is literally used as a toy and then burned out in the mountains. So, but that's a different, uh, completely different phenomenon to when the car goes wrong and catches fire. And actually, it came up with uh, somebody I was talking to in the context of, of renewing an insurance policy, which is, you know, traditionally third party fire and theft. You know, oh, fire, is that still a thing? And the other paranoia is, are electric vehicles more likely to go on fire uh, than traditional cars. Um, and the answer to the latter question is no. There are EV battery well, fires. By God, they're hard to they put happen, out when they yeah, go. They, that's the thing. They burn hotter, they burn longer. And in the US, they did a study on this, a transportation study on it, and they discovered that only about 4% of vehicle crashes are, res- are sorry, only about 4% of vehicle fires happen because of a crash. It's much more likely to be something mecha- uh, mechanical or electronic in the vehicle. EV fires are, are no more common than in, in an ordinary petrol engine car. Um, but in the US particularly, they were complaining that firefighters aren't properly trained or equipped to deal with them. Because when a lithium battery goes on fire, it's a different proposition than a, than a fuel tank. Now, a full tank of gas going on fire is a scary proposition as well. Uh, but it's a familiar one to fire services for 100 years. And this is new technology, so a bit of a worry. But and the lithium re- ion doesn't go out with water. Sure, it doesn't you, even if you drown it, it can continue. Well, there are ways to deal with it, in fact, and one of the ways is to include full immersion in uh, water. There was, again, one of those American uh, um, cases where uh, I think it was a Tesla, with no disrespect to that brand, but there was a vehicle fire. And the firefighters attended and they calculated afterwards that they'd used something like 150,000 litres of water uh, to put out this fire. Uh, So the firefighting technology will will become more sophisticated as well. And I think manufacturers have a bit of a responsibility there. Um, But in terms of us as punters, is my car going to go on fire? Uh, Two recent cases in Ireland. um, There was one on the M6 motorway in Galway back in June. Uh, blocked a few lanes of the motorway for a period. Uh, there was one on the M50 back in March. Again, vehicle went on fire. Um, how does it happen? And it turns out that poorly maintained vehicles is still one of the classic things. So if you've got a car, for example, that's 10 years old, uh, don't ignore warning lights on the dashboard. Just say, ah, you know, I'm getting that message every time I turn it on, but sure, it's due for service in six months and it's still rolling. Uh, clearly a really bad habit. Um, and it'll be caused by things like fraying cables, fraying uh, pipes, etc. Uh, and also um, a- a- electrical faults. So it's rare, but it can, uh, it can arise. When it does arise, what do you do? If you, if you smell smoke or have reason to believe this looks bad, yeah, well, don't ignore it. I'm particularly on a motorway. I mean, motorway, the motorway hard shoulder is about the most dangerous place where you can be in a stationary car. And um, so you don't pull in to make phone calls or anything like that. It's a really dangerous spot. You should only be there if the car is broken down. Now, if the car is broken down, the old traditional AA advice I used to give for years, uh, get everybody out of the car, put them on the far side of the crash barrier. If you have any pets, leave them in the car. Now, that's the car's broken down. Clearly, you're not going to do that if the car is literally on fire. Um, but, you know, if you have a dog or something like that, you'll have to be very, very careful and get out of the car and don't ignore it. Sometimes it's not a vehicle fire. Sometimes it can be things like, uh, you know, dust getting into air filters and stuff like that. You're becoming convinced. You said sometimes the, the, uh, an, an airbag can actually leak some of the kind of carbon dust and stuff and it can feel like uh, it can feel like a fire um, but sometimes there are genuine fires and as I say on the M50 in, in March on the M6 in June uh, you know cars went into roaring flames on the motorway There used to be a time way back in the day where you could spec fire extinguishers as an option on some cars is it worth having one in the no, car? No it, Well to put it this way 
look, if I'm looking at a fire, I'm sure I'd rather have a fire extinguisher than not have one. Um, but a couple of things on that. Firstly, uh, un unless there's a real danger and a real reason for you to act immediately, just get away from the car. Let the professionals deal with it. A car is, you know, nearly always outdoor. Perhaps it's a slightly different thing if you're in the basement of an apartment block or something like that. But certainly on a motorway, just get away from it. 999, let the professionals deal with it. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I wouldn't bother getting a fire extinguisher. In fact, in some countries, it's, it's compulsory to have them. Uh, but I really don't anticipate you using it. Just get the hell away from the car. More important to spend that few bob on making sure the car is properly serviced. You make a good point about uh, the basement of a, um, an apartment building in that one of the things, presumably, if you do smell smoke or have concerns, is be careful where you park. Don't drive to the nearest garage. Don't drive to a multi-storey car park. Well, if you're worried about the car being a, a danger in any sense, and obviously you don't, if you think the car might be on fire, um, clearly you don't drive it indoors. And, uh, I think there have been some it, recent uh, instances of people doing just well, that. And often people just aren't sure. I, I mean, I, again, in looking at this, there's YouTube footage you can find of a, a car innocently driving along a motorway in, or a highway in the US um, and being flagged down by other drivers. So, you know, I, I can see flames under your wheel arch. The guy didn't know. Um, so, you know, it, it can catch you unaware. What yeah. then about, you know, the, the um, gas network's advice that if you smell gas, don't switch on lights, don't do, use anything electrical, open the windows, all of that. What about the same in the car? Should you open the bonnet and, and uh, explore? Should you not? What's best practice? Well, put it this way. Are, are you a trained firefighter or a trained mechanic? Uh, if the answer to that is no, then why are you opening the bonnet? Uh, uh, what do you fundamentally hope to achieve when you look under the hood? And so I would say no, just get away from it and let the professionals deal with it. But the interesting thing on the electrics, and again, this is something that is a, appears a relatively recent phenomenon, sometimes it's not the car's electrics per se, it's peripherals and accessories that people have plugged in. So you'll see somebody in a car and they have a, you know, a triple USB adapter in the cigarette lighter and you Gee, that's an interesting thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, actually, I got that in the market in Marrakesh. It works great. And like if you're, <laughs> if you're plugging your laptop in to charge it, etc., those sort of dodgy accessories could be a, a, a cause of fire as well. If you carry dangerous cargo, I mean, why would you? But if, for example, you're carrying uh, you know, a can of fuel for the, the lawnmower or something like that, then obviously that's a potential fire hazard. We used to give uh, um, anti-theft advice to say not to leave valuables on view inside your car. So if you have a laptop, don't leave it on view. Um, but it's also a very poor idea to have a plugged in laptop under a coat uh, on the seat of your car. And I assume the prevalence of those kind of accessories has increased greatly because you see people with DVDs in the mm. rear headrests to yeah, entertain the kids. That, yeah. You see uh, dash cams, you see people charging all manner of stuff in the cars now. Yeah, and you hope that the, 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 the plug going into the car socket is, is uh, European standard manufactured and correctly purchased. It's not, you know, via a website from somewhere in China. And likewise, all the devices that are plugged into it. Um, and, you know, if everything is properly compliant, there should be no problem at all. I was saying to Pat last week that, you know, we're, we're apparently going to ban uh, e-scooters on public transport uh, because poorly manufactured e-scooters run a risk of battery fire. And that's happened in a couple of European cities. So we have to get on top of that and make sure that any of these things that you're buying that's going to plug into a car and um, that they're actually correctly manufactured and all sorts of hooky sources out there at the moment that means it's difficult to be sure of that. Which presumably also is an issue as well for people who are throwing e-scooters or hoverboards or whatever else it might be in the boot of the, car, the, boot of the car and leaving them there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're complacent about these things because they're getting familiar and just some modern devices. You really don't think that they are a fire hazard, but they can be. Um, and people who have teenagers, you know, how many times have you had to bark at them for because you discover a plugged in laptop sitting on the duvet um, and your man gone off about his business? And, you know, these things are dangerous. The fire brigade warn about it regularly. They're fairly rare and, and your EV is not going to go on fire. At least uh, it, it's no more at risk of doing so than any other type of car. And if you stay on top of maintenance, you should be fine. But there are silly mistakes that people can make. Uh, and, and, you know, plugging in hooky accessories appears to be appears to be one of them.